Hey everybody, welcome back to We Are the Batman. I'm Mike. This is Matthew. And we are now, we are coming here on a special Saturday edition of We Are the Batman uh, because we are now officially one week separated from uh, DC and Warner Brothers panel at San Diego Comic Con. And I figured it was a good enough time now to really sit and think about everything that was talked about and digest it and uh, and talk about it, especially considering there's not a whole lot to digest and think about. And that's kind of the point. Um, how you doing, Matt? I, 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 I kind of right now, have you ever like somebody invites you to a party and you go to the party and there's nobody there? And like you just realize like, oh, you just wanted me to come over and hang out. This isn't really a party. That's kind of how I feel like this DC panel was. <laughs> you ever had somebody be like, dude, I got this secret recipe for chocolate chip cookies. And then you realize it's just the recipe on the back of the Nestle Toll House package. Like, like and the package is empty because they ate all the chocolate chips. Yes, yeah, so there's actually no cookies. That's <laughs> that's kind of how we're feeling right now. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a total bust. But it was like seventy five percent a bust. Um, I'm I'm feeling. Look, I am a diehard DC fan. There's a whole reason we started this podcast to begin with. Is is just a, I love Marvel too. Marvel brought the area game. Marvel totally owned San Diego Comic Con uh, without question. And you know, Marvel or not Marvel. Uh, DC had a, a real opportunity to get some good faith back. And holy crap did they blow it yes i I think that there's we're going to get into it a little bit here in a moment but i think dc has always done the worst job in my opinion of really bringing something interesting to these things um you know they they kind of got it when they announced batman versus superman even though they had absolutely no information besides that they were going to do it but yeah this is just bah well, not because no, I I remember I remember where I was I was in college. It was my last semester of college when they announced BVS was coming because they're at Comic Con and they just show the Superman logo and then the Batman logo appears behind. I remember seeing cell phone footage of people losing their effing minds. I mean, yeah. I mean, people in another state probably could have heard the screaming coming out of this theater. And then it was it was about a year later at whatever the next convention was where we saw just that brief shot of test footage that was Ben Affleck in the armored suit and Superman, you know, Henry Cavill up in the sky looking down on with glowing red eyes. And that was it. That was the first anything we saw from yeah. BBS. And everybody was like, this is going to take over the world. Did it? Questionable. But. Oh, I don't think there's a question. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then the year after that was when we got the whole, um, the first, first trailer for Justice League, which was basically, here's a super cut of what little footage we have. And that first look at uh, Suicide Squad, the really creepy trailer that had everybody thinking, oh man, Jared Leto's going to kick ass as Joker. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about this one before you get me angry. No. <laughs> so, but, what I'm, but what I'm getting at is ever since then, DC has not had the showing at Comic-Con like they would have liked. Even yes. the one pro- right before Justice League came out, there was just a weird a funk in the air because those Ben Affleck rumors had already started. Um, so with this year, with everything DC's had going on, and knowing that Marvel was about to come out of the gate with something big, DC really needed a win. Um, yes. You know, they've had a decent year with the Batman uh, being as big a hit as it was. Um, they've got uh, Harley Quinn season three getting ready to start, which is a, which is wildly popular with fans. Um, and, you know, Aquaman 2 is supposed to be getting ready to come out uh, a believe the end of this year i think maybe it got moved but i think originally it was slated for the end of this year um and also with everything going on in the news with the with ezra miller it's like you guys really need some goodwill and rather than try to earn some goodwill they were just kind of like well here's what we got it's not much yeah it it, it, it just seemed like 
you could there's a way you could have still talked about those movies and not brought up the thing that's yeah. wrong with both of those films. And I don't think anybody in the audience was gonna go like, hey, cool, that's a great trailer. Why didn't you guys replace Amber Heard? <laughs> yeah. So to be clear, uh it did get moved to uh March of next year. So it's March yeah. of 2023. Um well, or even if they said, hey, I know there's been some issues, but we're not going to do that to these films. We're sticking with what we have, but let's enjoy what's there. You know, hey, we got Michael Keaton. We got this. We got that. It just, yeah, it's just insane that Michael Keaton wasn't there. Insane that yeah. Aquaman wasn't there. Not only that, but, and so let's talk about what they did bring. So they they did bring some stuff for Black Adam. And they did bring some stuff finally for Shazam Fury of the Gods. We got our first trailer for Shazam Fury of the Gods. Um, and but, but kind of the thing that they were really trying to bring down the house with their big presentation was was Black Adam. Um, the Rock, the Dwayne Johnson was there. Um, you know, he came out. He said something like DC will never be the same again. Um, he said that they locked in the final cut of the film the night before. And uh, they they were had that they had been uh, sh- that they showed it to the cast prior to so they could be prepared for the panel and and The Rock was basically saying like this is going to change everything and then they uh, announced that Viola Davis is back is is back as Amanda Waller again and then they showed this what I can only account what I can really only call a one minute teaser yeah um, it was not a lot of new footage there was some new footage most of it was um dr fate which i love again pierce brosnan as dr fate is genius casting and i'm so glad they're doing that with this and actually uh, the trailer itself was very pierce brosnan heavy and uh it seemed like they're really leaning into the anti side of the anti-hero part of black adam with this and but again it was it was a minute and most of it was old was footage we'd already seen yeah Uh, and you know the 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 bad thing for DC is that uh, I don't care about this movie. <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I uh, the rock is fine. He's fine. But like uh, Black Adam is Shazam's villain. Yeah, it's his anti. It's his his nemesis. So like I have no interest in a any villain led movie, period. That's not something interesting. But two, like, dude, why didn't you just, why isn't he just icon? Yeah. Like, that's, that's all. Every time I watch this trailer, all I think to myself is why isn't this just icon? If you want to, if the rock wanted to be a super, a superhero, just wanted to be Superman, And is, you know, even though for a while there, he wouldn't act like he was black. Suddenly now he's black or he's Egyptian, whatever ethnicity he's claiming, just let him be icon. And then you could do whatever you want with this character. I just, this is where the Warner Brothers thing gets on my nerves of like, I was excited to see The Rock be a villain against whoever they were going to cast as Shazam, but that's not what they're doing here. No. I should be more open to it, but I barely care about Shazam, let alone his his arch nemesis, let alone when his arch nemesis isn't his arch nemesis. So it might be neat that he came out of the costume at Comic-Con, but I don't care. I, I really don't. I mean, I'm not trying to be super Debbie Downer, but it's like when... The two movies you bring to the table are two films I could care less about. I don't care about what you brought. And that's kind of where I'm at with this whole thing. And, you know, with with a movie like Black Adam. So, okay, so first of all, Dwayne Johnson was cast as Black Adam in like 10 years ago, like (laughs) 2007. So 15 years ago, Um, maybe it's just like, holy crap, we've been waiting on this. So. Yeah. That part of me is like, I just kind of just want to see this and be done with it at this point because I've waited so long. Where where I'm getting a little eh is just they've given us so little. Like this movie comes out in December. It is the end of July. And we have seen one teaser and one trailer and they both use mostly the same footage. We and not only that, not only are we getting Black Adam this, we're getting the JSA. Yeah. Which is a lot. I mean, we're getting Dr. Fate, we're getting the Atom Smasher, we're getting Hawkman, we're getting Isis and Sabak and Cyclone and 
I'm just like, okay, um, whose movie is this, guys? Well, and this is what what this makes me think about is back when they were showing, I want to say it was like the Wonder Woman trailers. Yeah. And it wasn't until like that last trailer that she actually spoke. Like yeah. everything that was in the trailer was her doing action and Chris Pine talking. And I and I remember going like, oh, they're hiding it. <laughs> they're hiding how bad of an actress she is by just not putting her in the trailer. So yeah. this, that's what this makes me think of. No, he's not able to carry the film the way they want him to. So they're highlighting everything else. And granted with wonder woman, we got proven wrong. I mean, the first wonder woman movie is fantastic. 84 is bad, but it's honestly not Gal Gadot's fault. It's that script is just a mess. Um, so with this one, I, I'm black Adam. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about the movie overall until I see whether or not they link it to Shazam. And I think a lot of that is going to be, uh, or I'm sorry, Black Adam comes out in October. Uh, Shazam comes out in December. I got those. I got those backwards. Yeah. Um, so if Black Adam is coming out first, is there going to be some kind of teaser for Shazam? And obviously, he's not showing up in Shazam. We would have heard about that by now. Is there going to be like a post credit scene teasing for something with Black Adam? Because the first Shazam ended with, um this weird post credits teaser with um the little uh the, the little, little talking caterpillar whose uh whose name i am blanking on from the comics um but he is a thing and i cannot remember i'm getting it i'm is. getting it i know i'm trying to i'm trying to scroll through wikipedia right now to get it um and i can't i can't find it um mastermind mr mind thank you yeah uh he's he's there but from everything I can see in this first trailer for Shazam Fury of the Gods, which, by the way, great trailer. If you like the first Shazam, I feel like you're going to like this one. Um, but from all looks of things, it's got nothing to do with whatever's going on with the Caterpillar. Yeah, so it, what are we doing? And and what what really gets me and to get into to get back to the whole Aquaman and Flash thing is Shazam's trailer uses footage of Batfleck, Ezra Miller's Flash, and Jason Momoa's Aquaman. Yeah. So are we really still trying to build this universe? Are we really? And considering that they keep talking about, like, you know, we're done with Ben Affleck, you keep leaning on him and with everything going on with Ezra Miller, it's like, you're really still going to push this narrative even with this asshole. Yeah. It, it mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah. Say, what's, say what's on your mind, man. <laughs> I, I, I just don't, I don't understand <laughs> any of this. It, it's look, uh, if you're going to push the flashback, just, just get him out of the movie. Just get yeah. Ezra Miller out of the movie. Dude, there's at least 15 actors I can think off the top of my head I would rather see as the Flash yeah. than Ezra Miller from the get, let alone whatever nonsense he's doing. Yeah. Um, so I, I just don't. But it's but it's the track record Warner Brothers has had. Yeah. They don't have a plan. They don't know how to do any of this. No. So this is not surprising to me. Um, on top of that, of like, you know, like you're kind of saying, like, you know, even just anything, anything interesting, any surprise me in some way. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you're saying you have all these guys. Look, I know Amber Heard is in a weird spot right now, but then just have Jason Momoa there. Yeah. You know, have him there. And but no, I don't think the Shazam because the thing that. When I look at this trailer for Black Adam, it looks like Black Adam takes place on a completely different world. I don't know if that's supposed to be Earth. I really, yeah, I really don't know. I have no idea. I think it's either Earth of the future or it's, a, or it's an alien planet. Now, why that means they're still by the pyramids in Egypt, I have no idea. Um, well, with Dr. Fate involved, they could be doing some like interdimensional shit. That's very true. It's very true. But that's where I, I just kind of get to that. Like, yeah, that it doesn't. And and the fact that you didn't have them all together, like you didn't have Shazam, like, dude, 
how cool would it have been if Black Adam interrupts the Shazam panel? Seriously. And the rock gets in Zachary Levi's face. Oh, oh, God. How, how did you not do that? They're they're literally right there together. Yeah, I, I just I, now I don't know if Zachary Levi was there or not. I will say that. I don't know if he was actually there. Um, I'm looking at the notes from the Shazam panel and it just says they talked about what the story is going to be and that uh, they showed a clip from the film with Rachel Ziegler's character asking how the Shazam family met. Billy says Comic-Con and then she says what Comic-Con and then they show the trailer. I don't think any of the Shazam cast was actually there. Um, But again, that just kind of is another statement to just how bare bones this dc panel was i mean yeah. it's just woof what a what a swing and a miss when you've got when you look at the pantheon of dc characters when you look at the pantheon of titles and stories they could be telling it's like you mean to tell me this is all you've got yeah all this is all you've got and i i, I know it's taboo to compare marvel and dc i i get that but you know Marvel comes up and says, hey, we've got our plans for the next three years. Here's all these titles we are currently working on because they're like, hey, we have got decades of characters and storylines to play with. Let's play with some stuff. And DC's just kind of like, yeah, you know, those those two things we've been working on for God knows how long still working on them. Yeah. I just I, I just I was so I was disappointed, Matthew. I was as a DC fan, as somebody who defends DC more often than I probably should, because I'm a critical people pleaser, <laughs> as someone who is just such a DC shill, I was so let down because it's like, guys, you are making it really hard to go to bat for you. Because when people talk shit about DC Warner Brothers, this is what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and the thing of it is, is, is Look, I'm not going to necessarily blame them for the fact that Henry Cavill didn't show up. That was some BS that somebody started. Yeah, the nothing didn't to do help. with that. Yeah. The Rock didn't help. No, he did not. <laughs> but, like, let's just go to the fact that I said this in a, a different podcast. It's been almost 10 years since Man of Steel. It'll be 10 years next May. How does How is there not a Man of Steel 2? Yeah, no, we should be on our third Superman movie right now. It's it is insane. It's be, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what the problem is, and the problem is Warner Brothers. Okay, yeah. and by that I mean this: they don't look at the right metrics when they're trying to judge if a film was a success or not. Like, because they call they called BVS a a, a, a financial failure. At that movie, million. Yeah, that movie crushed at the box office. Crushed. It just didn't cross a billion, which is what they were hoping for. Same with Justice League. It didn't make a billion dollars. So they're like, oh, well, it was a finance. Like, like it just it didn't meet our expectations. Well, then lower your freaking expectations, guys. Nah, uh, Justice League only made six hundred million. I have a feeling it didn't even cover its budget. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ah, uh, well, you know, <laughs> but, maybe yes. that's, that's another conversation for another time. But no, but, I think, I think the, I think part of the problem is didn't bust a billion and, you know, in, in a generalization term, nobody liked it. You know, people, the only, the legacy that Batman versus Superman has is people argue about it. Which is a shame because now granted when I saw the movie, and it's a little bit of a sidetrack, but when I saw the movie in theaters the first time, I genuinely liked the film. I still to this day say that the BVS theatrical version is one of the most overly criticized movies I've ever seen. That being said, the ultimate edition, the, 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 albeit the Snyder cut of BVS is a far superior movie because it's one of those things like, Oh, I didn't notice how big of a mistake or a big of an error that was until I saw the better version of it. You know, it's like when this is all I've got, I'm assuming this is really good. But then when I get the better version, oh, no, you're right. Yeah, those there were there were those mistakes were bigger than I thought they were. I still think it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. Um, but the BBS Ultimate Edition is is absolutely fantastic. And the Snyder Cut is 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 
wonderful and beloved and there should be classes taught about the Snyder cut. Um, you know, the I'm just, just going to let you keep going. You just, you I, just I, shut I up. You, you, you shut up. You <laughs> shut up, Matthew Asso. You <laughs> shut your mouth right now. I know you don't like Zack Snyder stuff. That's fine. Um, it's fine. I don't like his DC stuff. That's I love fine. everything else. It's fine. I love everything he's done except for Sucker Punch because Sucker Punch is an unforgivable mess. Um, the movie sucks so hard. But um, I, I feel like his stuff was – but the, Warner Brothers learned the wrong lessons from those movies. Correct. Because, yes, BVS is an incredibly dark movie. It's a very dark movie. That does not mean it's bad. It is just an objective statement. It is objectively a dark movie. Correct. And that was one thing people complained about because they were so used to Marvel movies, which are very bright and very colorful and very lighthearted, honestly. Again, not a bad or good thing, just an objective statement. So their reaction to that was to go and reshoot and recut half of Suicide Squad, which turned that into an unmitigated disaster. And it also led them to say, oh, well, people didn't like how long it was, so let's make Justice League under two hours. Another unmitigated disaster, especially when you couple it with all the crap that happened with Joss Weed and having to step in because of things that were beyond anyone's control with Zack Snyder's daughter. That is a whole separate issue. That was an unavoidable thing. It was a terrible tragedy that was just kind of the first domino and a lot of bad dominoes. We'll so, have to save this conversation for the Snyder DC because I yeah, have all kinds of theories about this stuff. So, But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that after all of this, DC was looking to Flashpoint to be to the Flash movie, which is basically just going to be Flashpoint. Because yeah. when it comes to Flash, that seems to be all they know how to do with their TV and movies is Flashpoint. <laughs> um, and they were, I guarantee you, I promise you this right now, they were hoping to use the Flash as a reset button. Oh, yeah. I think that's universally understood. That they were looking they were to do. use the Flash as a reset button to, okay, now we can, now we can get ben affleck out of here and we can get this person out of here we can do this and that and the other and get these people out of here put new people in you know because i i guarantee you what they were going to do is they were going to take and i think this has actually been rumored so i could just be i could just be false remembering but they were going to basically eliminate henry cavill's superman and say oh it's been supergirl the whole time because they were going to introduce supergirl in the flash um and i'm blanking on the actress's name right now um and but now because your flash is your biggest problem child now they're sitting there scratching their heads like well shit now what do we do yeah because now we kind of need to recast the flash too the one we were kind of counting on to fix all this well and that's where you know again get ahead of it then say something bring bring out the people no like i said why wasn't michael keaton there Oh, have I Michael know. There. Have Ben Affleck there. Have the Supergirl. We haven't seen her yet. She hasn't been talked. I mean, we have, but I mean, have her be there. Hey, yeah. introducing the new characters that are going to show up in these movies. Don't bring up Ezra Miller. Don't bring up any any of the things we don't want to discuss. And and let us enjoy her. Let us enjoy seeing these new characters. Um, and maybe, I don't know, announce a Supergirl HBO Max show. And let's not even get, you know, you didn't, we didn't see Blue Beetle. We didn't see Batgirl. Like I was, I was just about to bring up Batgirl and Blue Beetle. I was just about to bring those up. Like, cause we've seen the set, the set photos of Blue Beetle. Tell me that costume does not look immaculate. Oh, it's perfect. It's right off the page. And I'm sorry. I know some people are being shitty about it. Batgirl from what I've seen of the set photos looks cool. I, I like the take on her suit. I know they said that's not going to be her permanent suit. That's their beginner suit, and I'm fine with that, and I love that. And also because of the fact that Brendan Fraser is playing Firefly, and I love that so much because I'm so happy for the Brendan Fraser renaissance. But we also know that this movie takes place as part of the DCEU because J.K. Simmons is playing Commissioner Gordon, but we also know that Michael Keaton's going to be in there as Batman as well. So I really need someone to make this make sense because I am scratching my head so hard right now. Uh, it doesn't, and it won't. <laughs> and we'll just have to accept that, okay, maybe there are people out there who will be happy Keaton is back. And I'm thrilled. 
I'm so thrilled. Just make it make sense. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, all, all things go away when you have a great story. I call it the bad boys effect. Okay. okay. Uh, and that like that movie makes little to no sense, has plot holes you can drive a truck through. But yep. man, do Will Smith and Mark and Martin Lawrence have some amazing chemistry and you're just in there for the ride. And it's not till years later you start thinking like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in this movie makes sense. But you're here, on here, the folks, ride. Matt Hasso hates bad boys. Get him on Twitter at Mr. J Ninja. Oh, I did not say that. <laughs> I said the story makes no sense. It's a fantastic movie and I will watch that and its sequel all the time. <laughs> but my thing is like, if you have fat, fantastic characters in there, most people will miss that stuff. I mean, look, does the end of Captain America Civil War make a lick of sense? Absolutely not. But eh. we've gone through the story. We're on the ride and we're loving it. No one's going to stop and go like, I don't know, maybe after Iron Man, you know, did all these things, he should just take a moment and go. I did create Ultron. I should probably chill with this dude who, you know, unintentionally killed my parents because he was brainwashed. But my B, my B. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But my My point more is when the store, everything is on point, people don't necessarily nitpick. It's when people nitpick because it's not there. And I think that's what DC just keeps constantly running into is like, you know, had, even if you only had Shazam and Black Adam, but had, Zachary Levi literally standing in front of the rock and them just stare each other down. Dude breaks the internet breaks the internet. And I, th- I think what bums me out too is like, just, just tell us what's going on. Like stop playing everything so close to the chest. Stop keeping everything a big goddamn secret. Stop trying to act like, oh, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's like you're the little dog in the meme with this coffee cup and the, the, the place is burning around you. Everything's not fine. You know why people have such good faith with Marvel and Disney? At least they're upfront if stuff's wrong. You know, why is Natalie Portman not been around here? Well, you know what? Wasn't working out. Why, why is Hugo Weaving not back as Red Skull? He hated making the movies. We let, you know, it, it, they're, they're open and honest when things need to be changed or redone. You know, with, with, when Chadwick Boseman passed away, they were like, yeah, no, we're letting you guys right now. We're having conversations and trying to figure out what to do. We don't know what to do. Yeah. We'll tell you our decision when we have one. And they did. Warner Brothers and DC just needs to grow some balls and just be honest with everyone for a change. Yeah. Yeah, just just say it. You know, look, look, I mean, we all know that Kevin Feige and the films that have followed Eternals have all addressed the big head and hand that are coming out of the. Oh, wait, never mind. Look, Kang yeah, Dynasty Avengers. Yeah, I know. It's it. That's that's that. Don't 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 make any mistake here. I'm still wanting to know what's going on with the head, and the hand in the water. Like, guys, is is that still there? It, yeah. Guys, guys. Is that still there? <laughs> like that can cause huge problems if it is. Um, but also, I feel like the less said about Eternals, the better. Um, but ultimately, like bringing everything kind of full circle here is just DC has not announced a DC fandom for 2022, and it's the end of July. Like it's July 28th when we're recording this at 4:30 p.m. Eastern time. If they were going to have one, they would have announced it by now. I think so. Yeah. And I'm hoping that they do because, because D23 is coming and you know, Marvel <laughs> has not announced anywhere near all the stuff oh, they have coming. The whole time at Comic-Con, Kevin Feige kept saying, we've got more stuff. We've got more announcements coming, just not this weekend. Because A, there's still a whole bunch of stuff in phase six they haven't told us about yet. And there's a lot of casting announcements that are going to be coming out and a lot of trailers are going to be coming out and a lot of this and that. And DC, you know, the first you did two fandoms and they were both fantastic for DC fans for something to do, especially during the height of the pandemic. Fandom was chef's kiss. It was fantastic. But a lot of that was banking on promoting the Batman. The Batman has now come and gone. What else have you got for me? And I'm going to tell you something right now with DC. This is their this is their last shot with all with everything they've got slated right now. If this does, if this current slate does not work, 
it is in their best interests to abandon ship on the DCEU and just stick to solo projects. Stick yeah. to stuff like the Batman, Joker, these one-off, independent, not interconnected universe stuff. Because honestly, when DC does stuff like that, that's where they do really well. That's where they've shown they do really well. If they if they cannot get their shit together with this connected universe, considering they they because they don't have a Kevin Feige, they don't have anybody in this executive producer role guiding the ship and developing story. They never have. They yeah. tried briefly with Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns is not the guy for that. He no, is not. he has almost no Hollywood experience. He is a comic book deity, has almost no Hollywood experience. So this is their last hurrah with black Adam Shazam and then flash Aquaman and Batgirl. That's it. And if they can't get it right after that and blue beetle be done. Yeah. And move on and just do your solo, do do your independent stuff because I'm at the point where I'm over it and I am the biggest DC shell on the face of the earth. Yeah. No, Matt I, I, Matt's like, yes, you are. You are the biggest DC show on the face of the earth. Well, it it just does. It gets to that point where I go like, you you can only stand by this ship for so long before you're like, like, what are we, what are we doing here? How how have we just you're you're too far along in this game to be dropping the ball this bad? Yeah, that, like that. That's my thing. You're there. There's you're too far you yeah. you either like you're saying either commit to the whole thing and get this done right or just stop just stop yeah. hey we can't do what marvel's doing there's nothing wrong with that nobody else can yeah nobody else can star wars can't yeah the, the mummy the universal villains can't oh no oh they really can't they they dropped that ball with movie one um <laughs> it and the thing is DC totally could if they would just get out of their own way. They need to get out of their own way is, is, is the problem. They're so up their own ass and they don't want to admit the mistakes they've made. They want to act like everything's fine. Nothing to see here. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. And yeah. that is not the case because you know what? At the end of the day, we're not stupid. We can see everything that's happening, and it's like, guys, guys, come on, just be done. Yeah, the, he, we, you have got people screaming at you of what you need to do to fix this, and you won't listen because it's not your idea. You don't want to do it that way because it's what everyone else wants you to do, and you want to be the rebel. Fine, but be the rebel better like you can be a rebel and still make good movies and do a good cinematic universe and it's not working sooner or later you have to try something else yeah again you either do it or don't 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 you just you at this point it's um i don't want to say beating a dead horse but it's just like we're just watching you guys die it's, <laughs> it's like it's like with a certain internet movie trivia web series that is about to be done forever and i've kind of just been sitting back and watching that burning ship sink with all the rats on board and i'm just like you know what saw this coming yeah. i'm just gonna sit back with a bowl of popcorn and watch the ship sink and that breaks my heart because batman is my favorite character of all time dc comics is i again i love marvel love marvel dc has always been my go-to and this is breaking my heart and i know i'm not alone out there in the world and i just i, I want them to succeed I want them to succeed. I want Ezra Miller to get his shit together. I want The Flash to be awesome. I want all these movies and shows to be awesome because then, A, it proves I'm right, and B, then I have good entertainment, and I don't have to apologize for it. And I want I never want anything to fail, but I'm also tired of being disappointed. I mean, my thing really is I just want enough Batman films to come out so that we can have Nightwing. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, yeah. Like, come on. We've had one attempt at Robin. And I say one, and I mean one. Don't ever 
bring up that second one. That second one didn't happen. That wasn't Robin. That was just some fan service bullshit. We've had one take at Robin, and that was Chris O'Donnell, and it didn't work. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it, it was okay. It was for what it was. It was fine for what it was. It wasn't the worst part of I. Well, okay, it was probably one of the worst parts of Batman and Robin, but <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> was I wasn't bad. even talking about that. But yeah, yeah. So just yeah, we th- this went from being a Comic Con discussion to what the fuck is going on with DC. I'm sorry for cursing, but I think they I'm, go hand in hand, very much so. <laughs> yeah, they, they, well, they they do because their their failure at Comic Con draws eyes onto okay, guys, seriously, what's it gonna take? At this point, it's ridiculous. So, I don't know. But, we, you know, we always want to hear what you guys think. So, by all means, let us know on Twitter. Let us know how wrong we are. Let us know how right we are. Like, just just chime in on the conversation. You can let us know on Twitter. You can follow me at Mr. Mike Shea. You can follow me at Mr. J Ninja. And we will await with bated breath your angry all caps comments about how full of it we are until next time we'll see you guys here another episode of we are the batman on the same bat time same bat podcast channel see you next time